Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's okay. We do record the show and then it is posted on our website for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with all of your colleagues, friends, family, neighbors, anyone who you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. For those of you not from Nebraska, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Um, in your state, it may be the so-and-so state library. But here, we're just the Library Commission. Uh, so we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find uh, shows on Encompass Live that could be for any type of libraries. Uh, publics, academics, K-12, universities, um, corrections, museums, archives, um, everything and anything. So our show here, the really only, only criteria is it has something to do with libraries and all those types of libraries. Um, some, we sometimes bring in guest speakers to talk about cool things they're doing at their libraries from across the country. Um, uh, and we um, have book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, could be anything. So you definitely should be able to find something on our show uh, that would be of interest and use to you. Uh, we also bring in uh, Nebraska Library Commission staff to do presentations and that we have this morning. Um, and also because it is the last Wednesday of the month, it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Yay! <laughs> Um, every um, the last Wednesday of every month, uh, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes on. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. And share something techy with us. So if you are the tech person in your library or you're interested in that kind of thing, this is definitely the show to um, sign up for and attend. Um, we talk about tech things other times in the month too, sometimes, but definitely the last Wednesday of the month will always be Amanda and her pretty sweet tech. Um, and today we're going green or other yeah. colors that we've just been <laughs> informed earlier. Um, I wore green for the day. <laughs> uh, how to make green screen videos. So I will just hand it over to you, Amanda, uh, to take it away and teach us everything we need to know. Cool. So it's actually not too bad to make a green screen, especially since technology is getting better and it's getting easier and easier to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're just gonna go over a quick little snippet of what green screen is. I broke it down into kind of a step-by-step -step process so you can try it yourself. And then I'll do a demonstration of how to do the video editing to get to remove that green background and put mm -hmm. yourself somewhere else in the world. And then I go over some recommended tools. I've tested out a whole mess of them. So I'll tell you what worked for me, what didn't, and what made me want to pull my hair out. <laughs> and then I'll go over some activity ideas and things you might want to try in the library. All right, so first things first, these next three slides are just going to be a quick demo of what green screen will actually do. So usually you start with a background. This is the scene that you're going to be putting you in place. And then you would want to find or record a green screen video. So, so this is just any subject with a green background or a heavily contrasting background. And fun fact, it doesn't actually have to be green. Um, they originally, so they before they actually used blue and they've also used like a variety of other colors. All it has to be is a heavily contrasting color that you'd be able to select in an editor and remove and make transparent. And then they chose green because they did some studies and found out that it is the furthest color from being a human skin tone. And oh. um, so unless you are using face paint, green is good. <laughs> as long as your clothes aren't green, otherwise your shirt might disappear. I know, yes. Yeah. I'm not doing green screen in here. This is my real office. <laughs> the right? yeah. So then you can just put them together. So you can see the lion's actually in a different position as she was before. And that's because this is actually a video. I just took a screenshot of a video. 
And this VR is actually another video that I found using an open source website. So this is kind of your first tip of the day is it takes a it takes more time and money to be able to shoot your own green screen footage. But if you still want to teach green screen editing without taking the footage, you can find free green screen footage out there that's available on like Pixabay. And I put a series of resources out there. So you can just search around and practice editing on that just to get a lay of the land. If you like it or if your students like it, then you can get the gear and set up to record your own green screen. And you can also just do it with your phone. All right, so if you are breaking down the process, if you wanna try it yourself, you basically wanna choose the background and the subject, which would, the background is where you're going to be located. In that case, it was a lion somewhere. It's either in the zoo or on safari somewhere. It was open source video, so who knows? <laughs> and the subject was I found a random virtual reality girl in open source, so I just kind of put the two together. And in the later editing, I'm going to put in a little thought bubble that says, This is what happens when you don't pay attention. <laughs> and so then your second step is to either find or record. You can find or record your background video yourself, or you can find and record your subject video. Then you're going to pop into an editor to remove that green background. And then you'll just layer the two together. So it looks like that. And then you can add in any audio that you want. And in some cases, you can actually record it while you're doing it, but we'll get to that in a second. And then you just want to save it as an MP4, which is YouTube friendly, or any other video format that your editor is comfortable with. All right, so I put in a little snippet just in case you do want to set up a green screen. This is just a reference slide that you can use on your own because we only have 15 minutes here and it takes a, it takes a minute to set up a green screen. Mm -hmm. And so the demonstration that I used, I've already gone through and I have recorded it and I have done the editing process to remove that through. But basically you would set up that heavily contrasting green screen, the recommended green screen size by Parker Welbeck in this top resource here is that you use about a 20 foot long green screen so that it covers the entire floor. So it's easier to be able to have the flexibility to move around. So in the case of that virtual reality girl, she was able to move left and right and she still had the green background behind her. And it's because that green screen was chosen that way. If you use, I've run into a lot of libraries that use the green wall paint so the tip that I give there is that if you use a green wall paint, use a slightly better editor than you would have planned to do. Because the green wall paint actually comes, a, it will appear from a distance as one shade of green, but in the editor, it's going to appear as maybe three or four, possibly more shades of green. And that's because of the texture of the wall and the way the light is hitting the wall. So walls actually have little bumps all over them. So if you run your finger over your wall and you can actually feel a texture, then that paint is going to show, that texture is going to show up as different shades, which is going to make it more difficult to go into vid, to the video editor and select and remove. However, if you're using a higher quality video editor, then you'll actually be able, that will have an automated threshold setting. So you can, change the threshold setting so that it change, it grabs more different shades and a wider range of shades. So if you're using the cheapo version that doesn't have as many settings, the wall paint's gonna be a nightmare. But if you're using a higher end editor and you're using the wall paint, you can cheap out on the green screen setting, but it'll be easier with the more expensive video editor. All right. 
So I won't spend too much more time on this slide. You can go back to it when you want to. Does anyone have any questions about setting up the green screen and how to do different lighting features? Um, let's see. Um, nobody's typed anything yet, but yes, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and whenever you think of it, just go ahead and type into your question section of your GoToWebinar interface and I'll keep an eye on that for Amanda. And the how to green screen in six easy steps actually has a lighting setup for you. So it'll actually tell you the different angles and you can just kind of mirror it back based on what's in that video. All right, so I'm going to go into the demonstration now and I'll use this first setting. This is the easiest possible setting that you can do if you're just getting started and that is using Zoom. So has anyone used the virtual background in Zoom? And I will give a second for you to put into the chat whether you have or not. While you're doing that, I'm going to open up a sample video that I put together. I'm sure many people have. Well, um, to bet. You know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very common um, yeah. nowadays. Uh, considering the situation. Um, I tried to use it when I was at home one time and apparently I needed to upgrade my Zoom or do something because I had no choices. Yeah. <laughs> I went to the I went to the part in Zoom that said here pick and it was empty. Mm. Yeah. Um, let's see what we got. We got yes I use a photo I have on my computer for my background. Yes, no, I've tried and it doesn't come out right. Yeah. Um, my husband uses it for work regularly. They have a weekly meeting um, and there's always a theme for your background. <laughs> So this, is yeah. this week, everybody share, you know, your favorite breakfast food. And so there's pictures of food behind people or your favorite animal or something. Yeah. So they go and find other, like the, the first person here says a photo I have. You find, you go and find their own photos to use in it. So they've figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. So this, so that virtual background is basically an automation of green screen. So you may not have a specifically green screen behind you, but that's all it, that's all Zoom is doing is it's selecting the colors that aren't you and removing it. And that is just the basic premise of what you're doing. So this was actually shot in Zoom. Mm -hmm. cool. So I just set up my webcam just like I have right now. My background is exactly as it is right now. It has my white wall in my closet background and I just uploaded this lion video. Well that's pretty cool that it can be actually video behind and not just a static picture. I didn't realize that. Okay. That's a hungry lion you got there. Or a dirty lion. <laughs> like I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I won't play that whole thing, but I basically just did like little reaction shots to what the lion was doing in the background. I didn't have to do any extra editing with this and you still get the appearance of green screen. So that is why Zoom is actually my recommended easiest editor that you can use. Um, I'm going to open up my Zoom. I'll start a new meeting here. And I'm not going to join with computer audio because it won't, it's going to conflict with GoToMeeting. Mm. And I am hoping that this is going to let me access my video settings. Okay. So I went in here and I mirrored my video so that I'm facing the right way. I did a mild touch up of my appearance. And it was mostly just because I had like a little red little mark here and that just got rid of it. Nice. And I adjust for low light so I didn't invest in any additional lighting systems. I let Zoom do it for me. See, that's and nice because people are always like, I need to buy those big ring lights or something and, yeah. and you really need to necessary depending on what you're using. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so that just basically it just kind of changed the contrast in the room so that the background was brightened and my face was brightened. And that way I didn't have to do any extra setup and I was just my desk is actually facing a wall right now. So I wouldn't have been able to put any additional lighting in front of me. The software just did it for me. And then we go into advanced. And I made sure to optimize the video quality. And these I just left on their own. And in the background and filters, I uploaded my lion. So I just hit this plus sign in the upper right where it says add images or video. And then I grabbed my lion and popped it in there. There is a checkbox now in here that says I have a green screen, but I did not select this because it only works with green or, heavily, or highly contrasting colors. With the white background, this, even though it's all the same color, it won't work. But if you have the mirror, my video is selected and you have a more monotone background, that'll work. If you don't have a monotone background, the easiest cheat sheet is if you have a um, white poster paper or white activity paper, tape it to the ceiling and roll it down. Mm -hmm. And you can do that three, four in a row, and that will white out your background so that this will actually work. And that way you don't have to do any extra stuff to change what's behind you, it does it for you. And then you can also re-roll the activity paper back up and still use it because all you okay. really did was tape it up and roll it down. So you're not wasting it, it's just kind of using it for something different temporarily. And we're going to close this. If you want to have some extra fun, there's also studio effects that were added kind of recently. So you can give yourself a mustache or a beard, and you can also give yourself lipstick without actually applying lipstick. So those are kind of fun. All right. So I was, I'm not actually able to demonstrate that because if I try to activate the camera in Zoom, it's going to take away from go to meeting, and I just it's easier to just show you the settings because that's pretty much the only thing you need in here. All right, do we have any questions about the Zoom settings and kind of what works, what doesn't there? Uh, let's see. Um, no, it doesn't look any questions. If you have any questions about using Zoom, go ahead and type them in. Um, someone does say, I haven't used it yet using the Zoom background, but I'll learn how, which hopefully maybe they're doing today. And someone says, uh, my computer needs more RAM, so someday, yeah, people are needing better yeah. to upgrade. Um, ah, ah, good question. Um, what does mirror video mean? You said you, you ah. did the mirror. Okay. So if you don't mirror your video, you will actually be like shifted and rotated in a weird way. Mm -hmm. So when you mirror your video, it makes it look more natural. Mm -hmm. um, the easiest way to do it is. Oh, I wish I could actually, let's see what happens. What if I actually just start it? Cannot start video. That's what I figured. Somebody else is, something else is already using it. Yeah. Yeah. So the best way to do it is to just unclick that box and see the distorted weirdness that happens if it's not checked. Sure. Try it with and without. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll flip you and kind of shift you around and you'll look like, you'll just look back at yourself going, that's not natural. <laughs> so is that um I've seen some people when they use the um zoom backgrounds and I mean this one when you did it it's very um clean but people move around and it flickers and like because they've moved suddenly you the background doesn't fully fill in or something yeah um so the what biggest thing is that this or is that something else or is that just technology <laughs> so the biggest thing that happens with this is the contrasting color of what is behind you in your actual background. So I've done, the, I've tried this two different ways. I've tried it with the closet behind me open and I've tried it with the closet behind me closed. Ah, okay. So with the closet closed, it works like this, like you get on the screen. With the closet open, you get black bars right here. 
mm. because the system... there's so many other colors and things be in the closet so many other things yep yeah okay so, so because and of what actually... got behind you already is so busy it yeah. it's got too much to try and account for and adjust for yeah and the other thing to look for is how you arrange your hair so if you look at this you can see i'm actually missing a curl on the side here uh, and it's actually picking up some of the pigment from my hair but i left it because who in the world looks at a tiny little curl on my shoulder so i left that there because mostly no one would notice and if you look here you can see a blurring from this is actually the rounding up from my shirt over my shoulder but my shirt is a similar color to the background that I'm yeah. using. Yeah. So it's starting to blur a little bit because Zoom doesn't necessarily know which pixel to choose. It's confused. This, yeah. Yeah. And it's actually this is actually closer to the weight of my background. Mm -hmm. So if I had chosen a more contrasting color like a red, this probably wouldn't have happened as much. Mm-hmm. So you got to think ahead about what you're going to wear, depending on what you're doing, if you want that to be perfect or clearer, cleaner. Yeah. And my hair here is clearer than my hair over here because mm -hmm. there's more white space in between the hair on this left side. So it's also having troubles picking up this. So when I shot this, I shot it three times because be before my hair was like out here and it disappeared. I shifted it in front of my shoulder and then it looked more natural. And if I were to move really quickly, it wouldn't have actually picked, it would start doing that blurring. Mm -hmm. So that's why when I play this, I don't actually move really drastically. You see, when I, when the line turned to the side, I actually turned really slowly. And you it's didn't because want, you wanted to be able to keep up with what you were, your movements. And that's also the frame rate too. So mm -hmm. Zoom, if you are running a lower internet connection or if you're running a, you don't have as fast of processing power, the frame rate per second is when that frame refreshes. So if, it's, if, the, if Zoom isn't able to refresh itself, that's also what's going to get that blur too. It's the same thing that happens in, via, in virtual reality. Because mm -hmm. like, so when you're trying to turn around like that and navigate, mm -hmm. the screen has to refresh every second. Yeah. And if it's not, you blur. Yep. So um, turn have a good, yeah, a good comment here that is a good explanation of the mirror video. Um, and obviously we've done this. Um, mirroring is important if you're reading a book to your patrons, like doing a... Um, yes. Uh, a story time and you're holding you know like you do you hold up the book um you want the words to read correctly left to right so without mirroring they would be backwards so you'd be holding up the book and if you can see the lettering it's going to be reversed um if you see some people when they post pictures on instagram or online somewhere and they're wearing a shirt or something you can tell if they've done this or not because whatever the writing is on the shirt will be backwards <laughs> yeah so if you're doing those kind of story time things, it's also very important if you're going to be holding something up so that it looks right, correct, yeah. But if you're going to take one of those videos that says, can you guess what's wrong with this photo? <laughs> Do it. You know? That's one of those things, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would have a comment that says, this is great. I hadn't thought of using Zoom. So glad I can use something that's already familiar that we've yeah. been using for a long time, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So this is the easiest way to do it. It's actually the way that I do it most because looking at the final product, who in the world would ever know? <laughs> and mm -hmm. so if I need to do any additional editing, I pull this into either Canva or I go into Windows Video Editor. Do you um, want to make the full screen again? Do the into present yeah. mode slides? Yeah. So it just gets I'm built. actually about to jump into the oh, next okay. one. So I might just <laughs> kind of leave it like this for a second. Never mind, I'll let you do your thing. <laughs> Ignore me. <laughs> All right, so we've got, we're at 1027 here. So it takes a minute to demonstrate Canva. So that is kind of the editor that goes along with it. 
but I've also got Wondershare Filmora X, which is, it's another green screen editor that I use to make this. So you can see that it's got the, it has a watermark by default. If you get the paid version or if you use the trial, the seven day trial version, you won't have this watermark. Mm -hmm. But this is the easier way to actually do a video. So if you don't wanna be pulling your hair out, trying to grab each little pixel from your painted green screen wall, that's probably the easier way to actually do it. And so this Wondershare Filmora, the VSDC and Lightworks are three that I experimented with. But I liked Wondershare Filmora the most because it didn't make me want to pull my hair out and you can get it for a $70 one-time fee or $40 a year. The difference is that $70 one-time fee is that you get a lifetime access to only Wondershare Filmora X or 10. I don't know if it's a Roman, Roman numeral or an actual just letter X. Mm -hmm. But if so, once they switch to Wondershare, Wondershare Filmora 11, you won't have access to 11. You'll oh, still only have access to 10. Okay. So that's the difference between if you use that one-time fee versus the $40 a year, because the $40 a year, you will have access to any additional versions after that. So once they've gone to version 11, you automatically get upgraded to it if you're going on a yearly. Mm -hmm. But if, you're only, if you only want to experiment around with this, or you're only using this for probably one year anyway, or if you just don't care about having the newest, latest, greatest, you just want it to work, then the one-time fee is good to go. As long as they do good support of the previous ones still. I mean, they do, yeah. I don't know how long. I don't know if they do it for a year or two years, but they do have support for it after they, sw they switch over. Yeah. Eventually, they would have to stop supporting, like, version two, if they're up to 10. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, it's a good way to get started, just to try it out. If you don't want to commit to the annual fee, you know, yeah. And um, then maybe later do it, yeah. VSDC is an open source editor. Um, if you Google um, free green screen editors, VSDC lands on almost every list. The caveat to that is that VSDC recently upgraded their what's covered in their pro versus, versus the free, and the transparency editing has now been switched over to the pro version. So they do require you to have a, it's like, it's $19.99, but I put $20 because it's $20. Yeah. And so if you are, it has, that one is a little bit clunkier than Wondershare Filmora, but it does work. It just kind of takes a, little bit more to do it. There are a million tutorials online for how to do it, but they've also changed their platform. So look for a more recent tutorial versus something a few years older because the screen will look different. And Lightworks does work for most things. Lightworks is a, they have both a free and a pro version. This is what some of the like expert level people use. So there is a higher level, there is like a higher learning curve to doing it. What I did notice is that, so I'm going to click this open here. So this here, I had to layer two images together. This was my background here. And this is the green screen that I found in open source. In order to get this to look the way it is, when I first loaded her in here, she was in the very center of the screen. In Wondershare Filmora and in VSDC, I was able to just click and drag her over here to where she's supposed to be. 
but in Lightworks, I actually had to go in X, Y, and Z axes to be able to shift her over. And when I first tried to shift that shift her over, it actually took a screenshot of this entire section. So I had like a double lion going on for a second. And so I found out through trial and error that in Lightworks, it wanted me to crop her down to just the area she was covering. The first time I cropped her down, when I played this video, she lost her wrist at this angle because it, she moved in the video, but the crop box that I had made cut off the area where she moved her virtual for her VR controller. So I had to recrop it and then move it. So it just it takes more tweaking and adjusting in Lightworks to be able to get this to look the way that you want. But Lightworks is really good if you don't actually have to change the placement. So if you don't care that she's just in the center, or if you're just going to be putting a kid on Mars, then Lightworks is a free, like free awesome alternative that will get it done really quickly. Because Lightworks will remove the background relatively quickly. The only headache that I had with Lightworks was shifting and positioning this layer so that it's in the right position. So if you don't need to shift anything, go with Lightworks, it's free. And so I'm gonna reduce this down. And I'm gonna pop back in here. So we've got 1035 and I will open up and do a demonstration of the Wondershare Filmora editor so that you get an idea of what layering video tracks looks like because when I demonstrate the layering and video tracks in Wondershare, it's not that terribly different than any video editor that you open up. So let's go to Wondershare. and Filmora X. And this will just take a second to load. I may re-click it. There we go. So I'm going to, the first thing you want is to, I always put it into the 16 by nine, the widescreen, which is that 1920 by 1280, so that it'll actually fill up the entire screen. And then I'll go into new project. So in this panel up here where it says drag your video clips, images and audio, this is where I'm going to drag and drop those, the video clips that I found instead of grabbing it from my downloads folder, which is probably easier for me, I'm going to go back into Pixabay and I'll show you the source of where they came from. So I'm gonna open up Mozilla. I'm going to open up a new tab. We'll go to Pixabay. Pixabay has, I use it for like everything. Um, my background slides come from this. And I'm gonna go to videos. I'll go to Lion and we'll scroll down until I find here. The reason I chose this Lion instead of any others is because it had a blank open space so that I'd be able to place additional characters. If I had gone with something like this, then I wouldn't have been able to have a space to put anything. I wouldn't have been able to, it would have just looked clunky. So I'll grab this. I'll go into the free download in the right corner here. And I wanna make sure that this 1920 by 1080 is mm -hmm. selected. We'll go to download and save it. Now I wanna get my VR girl. And she may have actually come from, I'm gonna open this back up. These are my main sources that I go to to find free videos online. And mm -hmm. I think she actually came from Pexels. 
So let me search in Pexels. I'm going to go to video, green screen. And this also might be an indexing issue here because I did search for green screen when I initially found the virtual reality girl. And the person who loaded that image in there may have indexed it under a green screen, but may not have added the virtual reality. So I can search for a green screen in Pixabay. And you can, as I'm scrolling through these, these are a mess of different green screen images that you can play around with in your library. You can add explosions to different things. You can make fish fly in space. You can make sharks fly around everywhere. And there's just a ton of stuff that you can do on here. Um, one of these sites has a Minecraft. You can play around with COVID when, he, when you're in here. I never thought I'd say play around with COVID, but there it is. And so they just have a mess of stuff. Rather than have me go through these five different websites, just know that I got VR Girl from one of them, and you can search there and download. So I'm going to go back into Wondershare Filmora. We're going to assume that all of our stuff is downloaded and ready to grab. And I'm going to go into my download folder, which that lion just showed up in. And I will drag this over so you can see what I'm doing because it's on my second monitor. So I opened up my file explorer down here. I go into my downloads and then I just drag and drop the lion over. Now I want the VR girl here. So I took a screenshot of her just because I made a demonstration slideshow. You can see some of the other green screen that I've been playing around with. And this is VR girl. So now we're going to drag. We have these are the clips that we're working with in our project. Down here is our project space. So this is where I'm going to drag and drop this lion. And you can see that these different frames have shown up. So now when I drag and drop this girl down here, you actually aren't going to be able to see this because of the layering right now. So this is kind of a demonstration of how layering works. So you've got your background down here, and if you try to put your foreground image down at the bottom, you won't see it. You'll only see a little tracing of where it's supposed to be. So if you don't see it, it's a good indicator that your layering is just in the wrong order. So now we wanna be able to get rid of this green background here. And it's actually pretty easy just by going into, there's this little icon up here when you hover over it, it says green screen, click on it. And you want to make sure that your color is selected correctly. If it's not, you can click on this little dropper and then click on this green and it'll get rid of it. So you can see before when it did it automatically, there was a little haze of gray. So if that happens, you can just change the tolerance level and drag it up and down until that little haze disappears. And you can also kind of adjust these different settings until your subject image looks the way that you want her to on the screen. That's and little. then when you have it looking the way you want, click on OK. And then you can drag her around to where you want her to be. And that's it. I bet that was a lot easier than you thought it was going to be. <laughs> it is a very intimidating thing 
to say you're going to make this video and green screen and layers it intimidates me i know <laughs> but no once you actually do it, it it's not bad i think it's a lot of experimenting like i was just saying little tweaks here and there that can adjust things and you'll see oh that worked better that's how i've done when i've had to edit things um yeah. At first, it's it's yeah, intimidating. Like, okay, this is gonna be forever, and I just dedicate some time to playing with it. You, you know, not necessarily with this has got to be the final good one, and learning from just move a slider, move something around, click something, undo something, redo it. You know, you can always fix something. You can always delete and start all over again. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, I do have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, and if I would, I'm sure we'll get to this other one here, but um, and this is I know to this we're talking here about how to make green screen videos, but someone wants to know: Are the steps for video editing going to be the same if you're doing a simple photo? So like doing something that's just a static photo. Yep. Yeah. Do the same thing so, with that that's just not video. I will open up GIMP here. So GIMP is it's my Photoshop alternative because I'm cheap. So <laughs> it's basically a free image manipulator. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to open. I will grab my, from my Downloads folder, I'm going to grab the screenshot of this green screen. So we'll open it. And now I'm going to go into the selector. So this little eyedrop picker tool will pick that green and delete it. So the reason that it grabbed this is because it selected the entire mess of it. So we are going to change the threshold on here. So I'm gonna pick it and now going to go to the fuzzy select, delete. So the reason you still have these little bits and blobs here is because they're actually part of, it's closed off in a separate section from where this background is. But you can pick, you can grab it. I'm going to, I just hit the control Z to clear it. So we grab fuzzy select, change the threshold, and now it grabs more of that pixel and delete. So as you change that threshold, it'll grab more and more of this color. I'm using the cheapy version of this. If you use the actual Photoshop, it'd be done by now. Mm, yeah. But so if but you free and it works, yeah. GIMP, G I M P. If anyone's wondering, and, Google it, you'll find it. Yep. But yeah. if you use cheapy, it only takes like a few seconds more and then you're good to go because mm -hmm. I don't mind deleting a couple more times if I get it for free mm -hmm. so yeah. take a little time little patience yeah. yeah so basically all I did was go in I loaded the image in selected that I grabbed this selected the green color and then I grabbed my fuzzy select tool selected that green hit the delete key and it was gone. So you're basically just removing a green. Nice, all right. And then you can open up, open as layer. And you can ask me the next question while I'm loading this in. Mm -hmm. um, someone wants to know, did you say we could use Windows Video Editor for green screen videos? Yeah, so one. you can do, if you search, if you have a Windows computer and you search for video editor, you can open up the video, well, it's it's the Windows video editor. Go to the new project and green screen test. And this is another one where you just grab your, you drag and drop your images to this panel here. And that's why when I say you, when you've learned them, you've learned them all. They all this work. This editor, it won't work for um, layering. That's the unfortunate part. It'll only work for sequencing. 
So the place where when the Windows Mini, well, so with the place where this Windows Video Editor comes in handy is if you recorded in Zoom that has automatically done the layering for you and you just want to be able to clip out little sections and edit it and trim it using an additional video editor because Zoom won't do the trimming and the editing and it won't add any text to it. But if you already have a completed video like this one, and I'm going to grab my lion video, which is in my videos green screen folder, grab this. So where this Windows comes in handy, assume that you actually don't have the trial version and this is not here because it looks kind of gross. But you can add text and say, It's a great way to start memification. And you can also shift the location of this up here on the side or pretty much anywhere you want to. So if you want to do basic editing like that or add um so if you want to add text, if you want to sequence videos together, which would look like this. So if you want to add in another, I'm going to go into my downloads, and you want to add another video together, you can sequence them side by side. So now these will play one after the other. But this doesn't have a chroma key option to be able to remove this. But you could remove it for free and pull it in here. Mm -hmm. And Wondershare does also let you add text. So you don't need a separate editor to be able to add text. You can do it there. And you can also trim so that these match up. Otherwise, if you had, if I had left this alone, then she would have randomly disappeared at about the 18 second marker and then it would just be a lion. So you just want to trim it and you're good. And then it all matches up, yep. Yeah. Um, if you are uh, looking for another question and go ahead and type in your questions, anybody. We still got 10 minutes officially left in today's show, but we will go as long as it takes for Amanda to get through everything she wants to demo and any questions you guys have. We will not get cut off right at the top of the hour. No, not at all. We'll stay here as long as you guys want to. Um, not for hours and hours, but <laughs> we have no problem going over a little bit. Uh, we have one question, which I assume you might be getting to um, how you finish and download the final product so that you can share it. Yeah, um, so you can go into export. In Wondershare, you would go into export and you can either upload it directly to YouTube or Vimeo, but I usually just export it to my device, which is my computer. Mm -hmm. And so I just give it a title, just like saving anything else. And Lion Green Screen Demo. And you, in this version, you'd want to select your setting on here, so the type of device that you're going to be exporting it to. And the settings, which is the pixel resolution, you'd want to change to the 1920 by 1080, which is what this is going to be saved as. And you would go into, OK, and I want my local device. So this is one thing you want to look out for for when you're exporting it is if you already know the specific de device that you're going to be using or students are going to be using, you can optimize it for that device. But the easier, the easier way to do it, and if you're going to be later uploading this to YouTube or uploading it to Vimeo, to Vimeo Select this local, which is the local device, 
this will be the file format that you're saving it as. I usually go to MP4 and Lion Green Screen Best. And so when you go to the local device, the resolution will be set by default as the resolution that you had saved in your original pro in your original project. And then you go to export. And it'll take a second to finalize it and get it downloaded because it's rendering this entire video format as it's saving it. And then this will usually, you can default it to go into your download folder. When you first download Wondershare Filmora, it will actually create a new folder called Wondershare in your documents folder, and it will save it to that folder. So if you download this and look in your download folder, expecting to find it there, it probably won't be there. It'll be defaulted to that random weird folder for whatever weird reason. Yeah. And so I'm just gonna wait for this to download and I'm going to find the target. So the find target opens up the file path and you can see this weird file path that it went through. So it's in my documents folder, Wondershare, Wondershare Filmora, and output for whatever weird reason. But you can move it. And I did promise that I was going to add in some text on here. So I can show you how to do that. And I will also mention that for anyone who wants to do the more advanced audio ed or video editing, you can add different effects on here. But these are all automated, so it's kind of like a little formula that Wondershare has already figured out and they just pop it in there. But we're going to add text in here. We're going to do this little, I like this little burst because why not? So whenever you choose one of these, it's going to ask you to add it to the individual project. When it adds it, it's going to download this icon locally onto your computer so that you're able to actually use it. The text is going to show up down yonder. And then we're going to type this in here. And I know I said I was going to put something in here. Oh. And OK. And I'm going to shift this up. change my text color. And I'm going to change the settings on here until this is actually more visible. You can actually see a faint outline of it right here. The reason that it's not showing up is because of, do we have any guesses? Layering. Layering, layers. So that's why it's not showing up there. I always demo that because that's the, the number one thing that people actually do and say, I just add your text matter, and yeah. it's not showing up. All right, so I'm going to change this. And I want a different style on here. I'm going to change the color, change the size. And then center this so that it actually shows up where you want it to. And this is another fun trick that I'll show. You see that I'm changing where this is located and no text is appearing. But when you move it over, text will only appear where it overlaps where you placed it. So if you want this text to appear through the whole video, 
you actually have to extend it out in Just this like bottom panel. Make it all match up, yep. yep. And so but wonder if you share make here is disappear, you would then put it in just one section. And we'll drag this over, shrink it down. Now I'm just kind of futzing around with it so it just kind of looks the way I want it to. I'm resizing this text box entry mm -hmm. so that I'm able to shrink it down. It's huge. And fit it into the bubble. Mm -hmm. And this is just kind of playing around with it. Mm -hmm. And there's an automatic font resize for when you reshape, when you resize the text. Mm -hmm. So you just have to manually go in here and change the font. Twenty. And This is what happens when you don't pay attention. Yes. That's <laughs> true. All right. So that is, I'm not going to finish playing around with that just to, you get the idea of kind of how to position it and how to play around with it until it fits where you want to. And I would just kind of reposition it elsewhere on the screen. Mm -hmm. And you can also preview it by pressing play. Okay, so I did say that I would go into activity ideas that you can do in the library. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to minimize this. And this is the GIMP in case you're wondering what you're looking at again. Mm -hmm. I just layered this in so that you know how to use a static image. Mm -hmm. And I will close my stock video. For as okay, a reference, someone did ask, they wanted to see the list of websites for pulling open source video and pictures from, and that would be right, the best here. Thing right there. Yeah. Um, and also, well, while we're mentioning that, um, when the recording is available for this, which everyone who attended today and everyone who registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording's ready, there'll also be a link to the slides in there as well, um, to the, the Google Slides here that Amanda's using. And what I'll do for a quick reference is I will put in the link to the Google slide that I'm using. So you have the links. But it'll also be on the Encompass Live page when it gets loaded up. Yeah. All right, so this is the list of links that people had asked for. What I usually do is I will search on here and just go for green screen but if you i search for green screen and you just get a mess of them if you sometimes if you search for blue screen you'll get something and anything that has a heavily contrasting color that you can manually remove that background shade you can use in a project and in terms of activities it looks like i did not add that slide here yet so i'll just tell you so what you can do is, has anyone ever seen Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yes. It's kind of like an improv show. Mm -hmm. So in Whose Line Is It Anyway, they usually have like Colin Mockery, he's one of the actors on the show. He'll be standing in front of a green screen and he has to try to guess what's going on behind him. So you can kind of replicate that by partnering two students up and having like recording like a little webcam version of it and then the other like students, a news like a news report about some event yes and yeah yeah he doesn't know what it is except yeah. yeah and he has to like the person has to stand with their back to the wall and to the, their back to the screen and try to guess what they're in front of so that's just kind of fun and you can also do like a newscaster thing uh, the easiest way to do it is by going into Zoom and then you can get a newscaster background or you can get an on location background like I did with the lion. And then you can, like the people can start practicing narration and kind of acting skills and different things like that. And you can also go into, oh, let me find the link to this, which I will actually add 
once I found it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there are a collection of green screen lesson plans that were put together by Common Sense Education. Nice. So I'm going to add a new slide on here. And these are the lesson plans for green screen. And I will copy, put it into the link. Yes. And take this over here. So these are organized by general grade level, and it has a, you can click it open, and it will give you all the materials that you need and guide you through the process of what to do, when, where, and why. And you can also adapt this to suit kind of your different need and just use the general concept or idea. But this is kind of the quickest, easiest way to get started with it if you are new to it. And it's a lesson plan. You've seen lesson plans. Mm -hmm. That's great to have good ideas if you're not sure what you want to be doing with your green screen. -ing. And then there's also the newscaster. You can introduce people to the idea of weather channels and weather stations because weather channel, the weather channel is basically all just green screen. Mm -hmm. And that's also where that mirroring is going to come in handy is because if you don't mirror, it's not going to look right to the people that are trying to follow your fake weather channel. And it'll also help people get like the hand-eye coordination and figure out what a U.S. map looks like or what a state map looks like just by practicing around with that weather channel. Mm -hmm. And it's always just fun to put yourself on Mars because why not? Especially now. <laughs> you know, no. Mars is in the news. <laughs> Pretty much. And so it's 11.05 and we're just about wrapping up here. So do we have any questions about green screen editing tools or anything else? Yeah, um, get your questions in. We'll answer them here in a few minutes um, until we get through them. Um, uh, we have a question about someone wants to know, is it possible to get a list of all the resources or we need to go through the recording to find them? No, you won't need to go through the recording. You're going to have a link to the slides, um, yeah. which here I'll, um, I'll share that again here. Um, I shared it into the questions, but it will be linked um, from the recording. So you'll be able to just go to the, her slides and just go through them to the page you want. And all of those are hot links. You can see them in there as she created that one for the to the common sense, um, right? Yeah, uh, they'll be all things you can just click on right in there in the um, Google slides, yeah. And I am going to change the font color on these just because. And there are a few other activity ideas that I had in mind. I just need to track them down. So by the time you access this again, there'll be more links on this activity idea page. That's what's great about Google Slides. They, they're, they're, they're a place you can go to. And if anything needs to be updated or adjusted or corrected on them, they can be fixed, yeah. And you'll always, you guys accessing these slides will always have the most recent information that might need to have been added, yeah. But the recording, it'll take me um, through probably still tomorrow to get everything um, edited. Well, the, probably won't have to do much editing, but uh, download it from Google, go to webinar, upload it to YouTube, figure it all out, get all the links in there. So sometime tomorrow, you guys will get an email from me with the, letting you know that the recording is available. So by the time you have that um, all this updating should be done but i have shared the link into the questions and in the chat so if you want to jump in there and just look at it now you are absolutely welcome to it is true 
Uh, does it look like any other questions about green screening is are coming in? Just lots of thank yous. Thanks so much for the help. Going to try something out. <laughs> Um, but you guys all, um, you will, you may not know. Um, you can always reach out to Amanda here at the Library Commission. Our contact info is on our Library Commission website. Is there anything else you want to talk about or show, Amanda, before we start wrapping, I start wrapping things up? Excuse me. That's about the long and the short. It's probably a lot easier than you thought. It is, yes. I am very excited about wanting to do some of this myself. I got to think of things. Okay. Not much of my job that would need to do this, but I can do some fun things personally too. <laughs> because you can. Yeah. Yeah. Really practice that. All right, I'm gonna pull back presenter control to my screen. Yeah. So that I can wrap things up for everybody. So that is today's Encompass Live. I'm going to go back to our main page here. Uh, if you use your search engine of choice and just Google the name of the show, Encompass Live, you'll find our website. So far, it's the only thing called that on the internet. No one else is allowed to use the name. <laughs> um, and you'll find our upcoming shows. And um, right beneath them, this is our upcoming shows. There's a link to our archived Encompass Live shows. This is where today's recording will be. It'll be the top of the list. The most recent ones are um, at the top. And as I said, there'll be a link to the YouTube um, recording and a link to the Google Slides, which I have open over here, so I have it for myself too. Um, you'll all get not be notified tomorrow when this is ready. Um, I'll show you here while we're in our archives, if you're looking for other shows to watch or other topics, there's a search feature here. You can search our sh full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want just something current. Uh, this is because this is the full archives for Encompass Live, and I'm not gonna scroll all the way to the bottom because that would be too much. Um, Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So we have over 10 years worth of recordings here. And we'll keep them up here as long as we have a place to host them. There's some great information out there. But, um, and you know, we're librarians, that's what we do. We archive and save things for people. But do pay attention to the original broadcast date of the shows. Uh, some, some information may stand the test of time, book reviews, it, and things like that. But some things, some data, some information may be old or out, become old and outdated. Uh, websites might not exist anymore. Uh, resources or services may have changed completely what they do, might not exist at all anymore. So just pay attention to the date of something that you're watching if you do watch any of our archives. Um, we do have a Facebook page that I do link to for uh, Encompass Live. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Um, we do post about the show, reminders to, like here's a reminder to log into today's show, an announcement about next week's show, um, information about our presenters. So um, if you do are a Facebook user, give us a like over there. We do share onto Twitter and Instagram, and I'm not sure where else, um, using the hashtag EncompLive, a little abbreviation there. So you can always look for that anywhere if you want to find information. Um, so I want to remind you, but we just uh, yesterday confirmed next week's show, next week, March uh, 3rd, we're going to be uh, celebrating uh, the upcoming National Poetry Month, which is in April, but ahead of time having um, be, uh, doing a session on Nebraska Writers Collective and their spring programming that they're doing some new things for young poets. Uh, there's usually, this has been Louder Than a Bomb, a Great Plains Youth Poetry Festival has been done by them, but due to COVID, not being done in person, but they've got some other things um, going on. And joining us will be Matt Mason, uh, the executive director of the Writers Collective, but also our current Nebraska state poet, yay Matt, um, along with Gina um, Trenisi, who is the program director at the Nebraska Writers Collective. So they're going to talk about everything that is coming up, um, one that I'm very excited about. I'm um, sure we all saw Amanda Gorman do her um, uh, read her poetry at the inauguration and at the Super Bowl. Um, now the Nebraska Writers, Writers Collective is having their first Nebraska Youth Poet Laureate. Uh, so a Nebraska poet for that. So definitely do sign up for that and your other upcoming shows. I'm working on getting things, um, things confirmed for uh, other dates in March and April. So keep an eye on our schedule here for our other upcoming shows. And last thing I wanna mention is this Friday, two days from today, uh, is an annual conference that we do here through the Nebraska Library Commission, Big Talk from Small Libraries. This is a conference with all presenters are from small libraries, uh, all types of libraries, public, school, academic, but with a population served or an FTE of 10,000 or less. So this is the little libraries talking about what they're doing. Um, everyone is invited to attend. You do not have to be a small library to you know, learn what your colleagues are doing. Um, it is free all day Friday. Um, 
So please do go ahead and register, um, check out the schedule, see what our, who our presenters are, and join us on um, Friday. The entire day will be recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Friday, that's fine. Um, we have a previous conferences section here with all of our previous years, and um, it will be posted there. And this is the 10th anniversary, the 10th annual Big Talk from Small Libraries Online Conference, so I'm very excited about that. So I uh, hopefully I'll see uh, some of you on Friday at Big Talk or whoops, um, at any of our future Encompass live shows. So thank you everybody and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>